Okay, good morning everybody. Um, this is Dave Whiteley from Envisage UK Limited, uh, another of, of our Friday morning webcasts. This one's entitled um, Autodesk Simulation 2012, Mechanical Event Simulation. Okay, um, Autodesk have spent something like one and a half billion dollars over the last six years acquiring um, simulation products. Autodesk Simulation was uh, their Al Gore acquisition uh, about two years ago. And um, their vision, really, Autodesk's vision, is to enable every engineer to use simulation um, so that you can actually use a simulation product on your desktop along with the CAD product that you're using at the time. Um, they want to offer a scalable solution so that you can move up to uh, the higher end simulation products should you wish. And they're aiming to get to a now solution to address the simulation. Rob needs. Heron. So um, what is uh, mechanical event simulation? Well, it takes uh, simulation a step further. It enables you to use uh, non-linear materials. Now joining. It, it also enables you to um, create non-linear static stress analysis and dynamic analysis and use rigid, rigid and flexible body motion. And you can combine these motions with uh, stress analysis, analyses. So we can use multi-body dynamics with large-scale motion. Uh, as opposed to uh, uh, the uh, linear static stress that we can do with the, the uh, uh, entry-level packages. This enables us to do the large-scale motion, large deformation, and large strain with body-to-body -body contact. We can um, analyze contact analysis, so uh, whether it's drop tests, or any other contact analysis, we can analyze these within the uh, mechanical event simulation software. And this is all over real time. So for instance, the, uh, the um, rubber seal analysis in the bottom animation uh, was done by us for a company that uh, designed uh, aluminum uh, glazing systems, and they wanted to check that uh, the seal worked correctly before spending um, probably a lot of money on tooling for the, uh, the, the, for the uh, extrusion. So the capabilities um, combines kinematic, rigid, and flexible body dynamics and non-linear stress analysis capabilities. We can simultaneously analyze mechanical events involving large deformations, non-linear material properties, um, kinematic motion and forces caused by that motion, and then predict the resulting stresses. Industrial applications, uh, impact simulation, drop test simulation, others are me me mechanism dynamics with stress, so we've got flexible and rigid bodies with motion and deformation. And we've got post-buckling and post-failure analysis and advanced contact analysis. The whole thing can be driven by load curves. So uh, death forces, um, movements, anything that can be driven by load curves. So you can actually set up a time duration for your analysis and um, the number of frames that you want to analyze and drive these from load curves. Load curves can be defined by using the curve button. A single load curve can be attached to multiple loads on your simulation. Tabular entry or equation editor can be used to define the variation as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now is show you a demonstration in the software of a um, buckle, a plastic clip. Um, we want to analyze this clip. Uh, we want to analyze it for the higher stress concentrations to see if it, becomes, if it comes within our safety factor limits of this buckle. We also want to probably analyze the force required to assemble the clip together. So we'll have a look at this uh, quick demonstration within the software and uh, come up with these uh, results.
Okay, so if I run off the simulation software, um, I'm going to bring in a step file, um, but I'm going to edit it within the Autodesk CAD software as well. Uh, we can read in various file formats. So this one obviously is a step file, as I said. We'll read, it, read this into the software, accept the units. And then it wants to know what sort of an anal analysis type we actually want to uh, carry out on this uh, model. Um, we have a list of linear and uh, non-linear analyses that we can carry out, thermal, fluid flow, electrostatic, mass transfer, multi-physics, which couples analyses together. In this instance, we want a non-linear analysis, and we're going to use the uh, mechanical event simulation analysis type. Gives you an idea of the typical analyses at the bottom here as well in this list. Okay, let's read the model in. Um, now, as you can see, this is symmetrical in uh, two ways, uh, or about two planes. What we can do in the software is um, model just a segment of it and then worry about symmetry later on. It makes the analysis a lot quicker because you're only meshing a portion of the assembly or the, or the, the model and uh, analyzing a portion of that model. Now, with uh, Simulation Multiphysics 2012, you actually get a, a, a copy of Fusion. And this is Autodesk's um, CAD product that uh, ships with a lot of uh, most of the simulation software and a lot of other products now as well. And we can, we can open up this model within Fusion. Now, you can think of Fusion as an intelligent uh, translator because Fusion can read and write dozens of different file formats, but also let you edit that file using push-pull technology or the um, sketch and extrude revolve functionality that we're used to in Inventor. Now what I'm going to do here is uh, to set this to inches because it's an imperial model. Um, I'm going to set up some mid planes or some symmetry planes. These will help me run or sketch um, some shapes in a minute to cut this out. We need another one between the top and the bottom of the product. Okay. And then if we just select one of these planes. And sketch our uh, geometry on here. Thank you, boots. And then we can just extrude this and cut as we go. And likewise, in the second plane, we'll sketch another shape on there and extrude that, just pull that through and cut. So now what we've got is a quarter section of our assembly modeled and then we can just push this back through to the simulation software uh, into the uh, Autodesk simulation software and that will bring the model and update the model for us to the quarter section assembly that we require. Once this has uh, been imported back in, we'll need to mesh it. So let's go ahead and do that. Just change a few uh, um, options here. I'll mesh this about 20% of uh, the, the size that it uh, wants to calculate. Let's go ahead and mesh that. This is doing a surface mesh at the moment. Um, there are many mesh types that you can actually carry out in the simulation software. This is using a um, a block type meshing, so it will try and do a rectangular block as best it can and tetrahedral after that. And in this software it does help, as you can see, a lot of block meshing going on. This does speed up the simulation because you're not, uh, you've got fewer um, mesh seg segments inside the model to uh, calculate. Okay, let's do some materials. Uh, with the software, you get um, two material libraries. You get the standard, uh, what was Algor material library, and you also get the mold flow plastics library with the software as well, which has got all the um, mold flow plastic materials in it, literally thousands of them. 
and uh, from here you can see we've got all the manufacturers of the uh, the materials and uh, I want to save it one and we just choose our material from this list and this gives us the relevant material properties that are going to come through to the material this is a non-linear analysis and uh, we I need to take a note of the modulus elasticity I'll need that in a minute yeah go ahead and add those materials and then we need to add some load conditions so um, what we're going to do first is uh, add symmetry to this model so if I just look look at this sideways on and we'll change this to rectangular selection I'll just select the surfaces along the top there and we'll add some boundary conditions to that now as you can see this is normal to the Z axis so I need to put Z symmetry on so that it analyzes this with symmetry on in Z the other symmetry is Y so we'll just select those surfaces and we'll add a boundary condition of Y symmetry to that back to point select we need to fix this at one end so we just select the surface on the right here and we'll add a boundary condition of fixed so that doesn't move at that end and then of course we need to move one component so if I select the surface at this end which is going to move and we'll select the vertices on there we can then add a prescribed displacement I know this is going to move by 1.22 inches that adds the displacement to this part of course we've got two parts here how does it know how they interact well we need to select the two parts and tell them that we want surface contact between these and we'll just edit the settings on this and change one quick setting we normally use a setting for the stiffness between the surfaces as a hundredth uh, of the elastic modulus which I noted down earlier so that's say, 200 and that's it <coughs> that's the uh, model set up we just need to change our analysis parameters because remember this is over time so we're going to say that the duration of this analysis is one second I want to do 25 frames and the load curve is starting at zero and just ramps up to one times whatever the force or displacement that's applied to this load curve um, and in our instance we've actually applied or we are applying this curve to the displacement so the displacement of 1.22 inches will ramp up linearly from zero to one second and that's it ready to go um, we there's a two sex two step analysis that I tend to do on this so I check the model first and what this does is it does a, a volume mesh on the model because the initial mesh was just purely a surface mesh this does a volume uh, mesh on the model it also checks all the um, forces the displacements uh, any con loads and constraints that I've added and checks that they're all um, correct uh, it's also rather useful to show whether I've applied my forces in the right direction because this will give me the um, graphical um, feedback and in this instance you can see the blue arrows just wait for that to come up in the results will show us that the displacement of the green component into the red one is in the correct direction okay as you can see on the screen here now this will take about 10 minutes to process so I've got one set up already here that's been processed and solved and we'll just uh, change the view slightly we'll take off any loads and constraints we'll show it meshed and let's have a look and play this and see what happens to the components so I've got von Mises stress concentrations showing and this is running through the 25 time steps that I've asked for let's just um, draw transparently the other component and as you can see the surface to surface contact is working we've got some stress concentrations on the arm of the component here in red if I just stop this and perhaps put this as mid load case let's have a look at the uh, maximum stress concentration 
okay, in this area here. What I'll do is I'll select one of these points and we'll embed a graph onto my results here. Just move this back. And now the graph shows us the stress concentration against time, this green curve here, and as I play the results, this will move a bar across and show us what the stress concentration or the maximum stress concentration at that point that I chose um, is uh, throughout the time of this analysis. Okay, um, this can then, we can take this maximum stress here or the position at this maximum stress and put this through the fatigue analysis software that we have in Autodesk Simulation and we could then um, do a fatigue analysis on this assembly to find out how many, uh, what sort of life um, expectancy in cycles this assembly has and that's all part of the sim Autodesk Simulation software. I'll probably do this at another time, uh, another Friday uh, webinar. So finally, we want to know what sort of force is required to um, push this together. So let's just uh, start up another window and uh, put on here that we want, let's just change this to a different style again, and we'll, we'll need to show the reactions uh, in X because X is, is along the assembly, so we want the negative force reaction force in X and as we play that that will show us the reaction forces. What I'm going to do here is just select the surface on the one end And we'll graph this and show the reaction forces, again through time, of the component as it's progressively pushed together throughout the 1.22 inches that's required to couple the uh, clip together. And as you can see, we're up to about half a pound force um, just below, just before the, um, the clip clicks into position. This is a bit of a ragged curve. You would get a more smooth, a smoother curve if you actually chose um, more steps um, for the time duration, and we've got a much smoother curve. So this gives us uh, two, two sets of results. Um, the, re, the maximum stress concentration in the component. We can then um, show also the uh, negative uh, reaction forces to show what sort of force is required to put the clip together. And we could also take the forces um, from the, uh, the maximum stress concentration from the clip and put that through to a fatigue analysis, uh, should we wish. Okay, so just to finish off. My contact details, should anybody want to contact me afterwards, are on the screen. Uh, we've also got a YouTube channel, so if you search for Envisage UK LTD, you'll see um, the uh, webcast that we've uploaded so far on YouTube. Um, this is just a quick customer success story of Tucker Snowcat Corporation, who have been using uh, the MES software to uh, reduce uh, time and costs of their design validations. because. Um, certainly speaking to a lot of companies, especially companies who have plastic parts uh, created, the cost of tooling is phenomenally high these days and they want to reduce the iterations of the tooling that they um, have manufactured and they're finding that using the MES software in uh, um, certainly plastic clip analysis and uh, a drop test analysis and so on has been very, very fruitful. So thank you very much for your time, have a good weekend, and uh, hopefully catch up with you again shortly. Thank you very much. Now leaving. Shane. Dave Whiteley.